Good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am I am back again with another video for us to peruse and annotate and you know uh comment on. So yeah, this is a very very interesting speed paint that happened last year and I'm kind of excited to show this. Um yeah, <laughs> so the prompt for that day um Oh, well, I guess to preface this video before <laughs> going on and talking about the prompt. So I'm a member of the daily spit paint group and we get four prompts a day. And, you know, we basically draw, we pick one prompt and draw something based on that prompt. It's a good um, daily art exercise. I got into the habit of um, very effective in helping me flex my art muscles. So, yeah, it's a great group group in Facebook. Come join us. But the prompt for uh, January 15th of 2020 was silence. Um, so that was the prompt from last year. Um, and it's really interesting what I drew because um, back then around this time, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious what I drew, right? I drew this lady in a park somewhere with a mask on her face, right? And when I drew this, I, I didn't even know COVID existed. I mean, COVID was um, around by the time that um, the pro this prompt came, right? And, um, and it didn't really become popular. I was going to say popular, and that's not true it didn't really hit anyone's uh radar until march uh there were news um about the virus as early as like november or december because it was spreading in asia but it didn't really become um obviously like a big deal until march of 2020 so two months prior right even before i knew that any of this uh covet stuff was going to happen i ended up drawing a girl with a mask so i thought that was very very interesting and unique because um yeah <laughs> we ended up wearing masks all throughout 2020 so um yeah i thought that was just very very interesting the other thing that was really really unique and was really really cool about last year was that there's all these drawings that i have that are just kind of like really unique because it has like premonition of some sort <laughs> visually speaking um and to explain farther um one of the ones that one of the videos i posted last year was um uh, the shaman 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 is that how you say it i don't even know how you pronounce it but it's an image of a guy in a workplace right and i drew that sometime around summer and that wasn't very like a premonition kind of painting simply because by that time i was pretty aware about people losing their jobs because of the whole COVID thing right so and when i even when i did the painting initially i didn't even i wasn't even really thinking about that scenario you know i, I didn't have job loss as the topic in mind when i started that painting i had something else in mind um but it was still kind of unique because that painting kind of reflected what was going on in the culture. So that was a very unique painting that I posted. Um, and then this painting, which I'm about to post, obviously on my social media. This is obviously interesting because this lady is wearing a mask, right? Um, so it's interesting because I kind of drew this before everyone started wearing masks. So that was like very unique. The other thing that I drew was um, the day before on January 14, 2020, one of the prompts from the Daily Spit Paint group was infected and I chose that, right? And I don't know if the admins knew that COVID was going on. They probably did because they were probably watching the news way more than I was. So they might have been aware about it going on in Asia, right? And so that might have inspired them to use infected as their prompt for January 14. So I ended up drawing infected even before I knew COVID was happening, right? But that's not really special uh, by any means. Um, simply because, you know, I mean, word infected could have meant something else, right? Um, 
it could mean a lot of different things but but anyways um so that one's not really posted in my social media except for um a few areas of my social media but that was like a really interesting painting simply because i chose infected out of all the four prompts that we have i chose infected and i drew someone in a hospital being taken care of uh, by someone who's in who's wearing a hazmat suit so that was kind of unique right and then the other thing that i painted that was very very unique that what happened or i did the painting way before even any of the stuff happened was the george floyd um incident from summer uh slash may of 2020 um even before like that incident happened uh, i think george floyd incident happened like at the end of may if, if i'm not wrong and then like it was at the beginning of the summer well at the very very beginning of the of may one of the prompts from the daily spit group was phalanx formation right and typically phalanx you think of greek soldiers and their phalanx formation uh that they popularized like obviously way back in 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 the day but for some odd reason i kind of pictured in my head um cops you know with their phalanx formation when they're trying to control like a a riot a rioting crowd and so i ended up painting that and then, lo and behold all the rioting and the looting happened and i'm like wow all these paintings that i'm doing is just kind of odd so but yeah so enough about me tooting my own horn so i thought that was kind of cool though because they're all purely coincidental you know i do not have predictive powers no sorry <laughs> i really don't but I just thought it was just really unique that I came up with all these paintings that kind of, sort of, you know, predicted what was going to happen. So, yeah. But anyways, enough about that. Let's talk about art because really this is what this channel is. Um, part of my videos, I talk about like the idea, what ideas come from and how it evolved and yada, yada. And so... Um, that's the reason why i went through all that spill about you know all this painting is kind of unique because all these ideas kind of came in my head and painted things a certain way and then lo and behold things happened that kind of reflected what my painting so it was just very very unique but for this particular one obviously um even though covid was um around i wasn't aware that it, it was even a thing and so i i wasn't aware of like mask wearing or whatnot um, when this happened, when I was drawing this prompt, I, I really have zero clue. Like I typically what I do right before I'm starting, uh, the drawing is that I would take the prompt and try to do a quick Google search for like a minute or two. And if I can't find like an image inspiration, then I just try to go with something. Right. And in this case, I did a Google image search for like a minute or two and like I couldn't come up with anything. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to um, wrap something around a person's mouth to keep them silent <laughs> was what I thought of, you know. And so that's the reason why I drew this particular scene for the prompt silence, because I was just sitting there thinking, OK, well, what would make one silent? Well, a gag of some sort to keep them from talking that would make them silent. So, yeah, let's put some form of handkerchief mask on someone's face. <laughs> so, um, so basically, this is what I decided to draw for the prompt silence, which then ended up reflecting the whole mask wearing thing that we are now doing because of COVID. So, yeah. But anyways, again, <laughs> I went off about the idea. Let's talk about the art process. Um, so initially, at the very beginning, I did my sketch, uh, pretty much standard practice. Um, when I first started speed painting, I wasn't doing a sketch, but I realized I really do love a sketch, even a even a messy one because it kind of helps me figure out um, what my general shapes would be you know and so I did a quick sketch obviously and then after that I did this two-tone background thing that I used to do back in the day which is basically the whole two color two-tone background kind of just separates the dark from the light you know 
and it helps me control the values basically this this is what i'm talking about right here this two-tone background it kind of just helps me uh guide me in trying to figure out where my light areas are and dark areas are and kind of just pushing those values because um one of the things that i feel is fundamentally important in any kind of painting is the value range i learned that from marco bucci by the way um uh, he has a, an amazing 10 minute video about it uh like he's doing this whole um painting lessons in 10 minutes and one of the ones he talked about was value and how it can make or break your painting basically so Anyways, uh, because of that video, I started doing this whole, you know, well, let me make sure that I have a good value range. And so um, I started doing the two-tone thing, right, which basically separates the light and the dark. And, and then it helps me quickly select the light area and the dark area. So in this case, right, like what I just got done finishing was that I selected the light area and then... Uh, kind of did a curve edit on it so I could um, pump up the lighter values more and then I did the same thing for the darker areas um, I selected the dark areas and then kind of did another curve edit so that I could uh, strengthen those shadows right so and then after that um, obviously I did like this whole coloring quick coloring thing before any of that because basically my whole goal in and doing this quick coloring and then and then doing all those curve edits is um eventually i'm going to merge them all in one layer which i just did just now and then i do this whole textured blender thing um my goal basically in doing all those crazy edits and then all those weird funky coloring schemes very unique way of coloring things is so that um, I basically just make a mess initially so that I could all put them all together into this nice clean base paint that I work my details on. So as you can see, all the mess is slowly being erased by this textured blender brush and I will eventually end up with a base paint that I will do all my detailing on as you will see in the next few minutes.
as you can see I already finished uh, blending um, with the textured brush uh, and obviously I smoothed uh, all that mess out into this very nice base paint that I work on and so now that I'm done with that I'm obviously I've obviously started detailing started my detailing process um, so basically I'm kind of just uh, making the shapes of the trees readable uh, is what I'm doing um, like when I do my detailing it's basically this three-step process I've mentioned before uh, numerous times in my video uh, basically uh, what I do is I delineate my edges so that my sh uh, shapes read clearer um, because when you do the textured brush obviously or textured blender brush obviously things kind of get fuzzy so you kind of have to you know make things a little sharper just so that it's a recognizable shape instead of a blob <laughs> uh -huh. and so that's kind of what I'm doing right now is just you know making some of my edges sharper uh, making the trees read clearer is what I'm trying to do um, and then I also accentuate my shadows and my shadows need a little bit more darkening and then I add highlights so it's basically like that three-step process that I kind of go through sections over sections of my painting obviously I'm doing that with um, the background and then obviously I'm gonna move slowly towards the foreground doing the ground and then obviously the female figure with the mask right so yeah that's what I'm, I'm gonna do next um, for this particular one I don't remember accentuating the shadows a whole lot like I don't remember adding any kind of uh, multiply uh, colors to make the shadows sharper so I, I think it has a good enough value range the background is very very plain and I think that's what I love most about this painting um, is that really the ground slash sky is all just this one um, very very simple uh, brownish um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, gradient you know so it just like this light brown at the top and then uh, regular brown in towards the end so it's like a basic gradient basically and so it's really really simple it's very very effective I mean pretty much the only things that you see in the painting itself is just the trees and the girl in the foreground so it's a very unique and simple uh, painting in this regard right uh, there's really not a whole lot in the uh, background and I really like the simplicity of, of that basically um, so yeah, uh, when it comes to like uh, darkening the shadows and whatnot, I didn't really feel the need to because that brown background is just so light that all the mid-range colors that I put down just pretty much ended up looking like a really, really good looking shadows, you know? I mean, the, the browns that I use for the trees and the blues that I use for the girl, for example, I mean, they're all slightly mid-range, slight, slightly slower mid-range. Um, they're not really in the shadow area range but then I again like I said I didn't feel the need to push all those shadows simply because the background was just really really light uh, so yeah so I feel like that's balance and so I just kept everything as is um, in terms of like shadows um, I did add some highlights towards the end like I remember um, uh, cutting off sections on the girl's face and some parts of the trees just to make them a little uh, brighter uh, uh, make them stand a little lighter in comparison to the background so I remember doing that um, but yeah I mean aside from those few edits I mean it's honestly like it's really coming along nicely this particular painting the majority of my time was pretty much just spent on just making the shapes you know read clearer uh, such as the case of what I'm doing with the female figure as of the moment, you know, because obviously before she just looked like a blob, but now I'm kind of making things, uh, I'm kind of making her look like she's wearing a coat, 
and she has some form of scarf around her which that scarf really needs a lot of work because it's, it's still just a bunch of lines to stop this moment but even then those bunch of lines just kind of gives a nice enough impression that it is a scarf obviously so yeah but yeah i'm just going to continue detailing this female in the next few minutes So this speed paint is pretty much close to being finished um, and that's again another uh, fact that I forgot to mention early on in the video. Um, the daily speed paint group, they're all about doing speed paints and speed paints are essentially very very quick paintings, uh, typically thumbnails, uh, that's what they do in the industry is they do thumbnails and they do this just to a, um, well as a good exercise doing all these speed paints. And then B, um, it's a quick way of getting an idea down. Um, so yeah, it's a popular method in in the art industry, in the commercial art industry, to um, do all the speed paintings and just get some quick ideas down, kind of help visualize some things, right? So, but yeah, it's a very tough exercise. That is one thing I could honestly say about uh, 
doing a 30 minute speed painting because you only have 30 minutes <laughs> I mean, for me, especially for me, I want to jam pack a whole lot of details and pack in a whole lot of information, paintings, and honestly, 30 minutes just isn't enough. But it's still a good exercise because it, it gets you to speed up your thinking process quicker, you know? So, but yeah, I love doing this now. And it's always a nice warm up for my day. And so, yeah, um, in about a few minutes or so this speed painting is going to be done 30 minutes to do a painting <laughs> yeah which is honestly kind of funny because bob ross all his shows were all in the 30 minute park so you can pretty much say that bob ross is the most popular speed painter out there so um because yeah all his paintings are all in the 30 minute mark but it's it's really a difficult exercise personally for me i really want as much time as i can get in a particular artwork i do get burned out i will admit that so, and i do get bored with some of my longer pieces but i prefer longer pieces honestly simply just because you know it's a labor of love man you know when you pour in a lot of work on a piece, you're just like, well, even if this doesn't come out right, I, I still love it just because there's a lot of effort that was put into it. So, yeah, I put out a lot of like 30 hour illustrations that to this day, I'm just like, man, oh, it's, it's not very good, you know. But yeah, I still put it in my featured section of my portfolio simply just because there's something about uh, the process that I did during that um, particular painting that is basically a good learning lesson so so yeah but yeah this is one of my very unique paintings from last year something that I didn't really expect to make a lesson out of but I felt the need to do so simply because of what it entails a girl wearing a mask a very very unique thought idea that came to my head even before it became a thing so yeah and that's it thank you guys for watching this video with me and listening to me chat i will see you guys in the next video like and subscribe good night